Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we are tracking Invest 94L for development out in the Atlantic, as well as the Western Caribbean's potential next threat. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltippets.com for Friday, October 11, 2024. Before we get into the video, I do want to give a shout out to everybody who watched yesterday's video. 41,000 views, biggest video I've had this entire year. So thank you very much, and let's get into this. So we have the pink arrow that is what's left of uh, Tropical Storm Leslie. As you can see, it's lost most or all of its convection. Red arrow is what's left of Milton as it passes to the south of Bermuda as an extra tropical system. And then we have the purple arrow, which is 94L, which has a moderate chance of development over the next, I would say, 12 hours, really. Uh, but we have to keep an eye on it because even if it doesn't develop within the next 24 to 48 hours, that energy could make its way towards the Western Caribbean by next week and develop in the Caribbean. So we'll have to keep an eye on it, as well as all the thunderstorm convection that will be forming in the Western Caribbean by the time we get to next week as well. Speaking of which, here's our energy, our spin and energy in the atmosphere. So bottom right of your screen is 94L. It's a little stretched out and elongated. That's why it's not developed into a tropical entity just yet, even though it does have winds of 40 miles per hour. It needs to be a little bit more circular in nature, like we have with Leslie in the middle of your screen there. That really stretched out, elongated one next to it to its left. That is what's left of Milton. And then in the Caribbean, we have just north of Colombia, that area of vorticity that is going to be our focal point as it moves into the Central American gyro region of Central America and Western Caribbean could focus and potentially uh, develop next week into our next tropical system. So I'm waiting to see if the National Hurricane Center picks up on it because the models have been showing this for the last couple of days and now it's in the range of seven days so got to see if they want to pick up on it. But since Hurricane Milton, we are officially in above average territory in terms of the Atlantic hurricane season now. As you can see, that purple line, that S-shaped line, is the normal ace uh, for any given particular Atlantic season. The blue line, we were above after barrel uh, for a good chunk of the early part of the season. We're still above when we had Debbie, Fr Ernesto, and Francine come through. And then when we had our last lull before our burst of activity at towards the end of September into October, that's when we finally we were below average. And then thanks to Milton, as well as Kirk and Leslie, have gone above average and will remain above average for the rest of the remaining season even if we didn't have another named system. But from here on now, it's a matter of how above uh, average do we get, and potentially with La Nina still knocking on the door of coming to fruition, how deep into the Atlantic hurricane season into the fall will we see activity go? Will it end after Milton, which right now doesn't look likely? Will it? we have activity into November? maybe even December. That is still up in the air, so we'll have to keep an eye on everything, and that's what we're going to do in this video. So here is what's left of Tropical Storm Leslie. I'm surprised they still have this as a tropical storm. As you can see, there's barely any thunderstorm activity with it. it does have a nice closed center, though, as you can see in that visible satellite image. It's only got winds of 50 miles per hour, moving in a north-northeast direction at 10, and by the time we get to tomorrow afternoon, evening, that's when it's forecast to become an extra tropical system. Uh, based on the satellite image, I wouldn't be surprised if the next update puts it at, at that uh, condition. Here is Invest 94L near the Cabo Verde Islands. 
Like I said before, it's got winds of 40 miles per hour, but the low pressure system is still elongated. It's not a perfect uh, closed low yet. So that's why it's not a tropical lead main storm, which would have been Nadine. It's got a 40%, I mean 50% chance of doing that within the next two and seven days, but really it's really in the next 12 hours before conditions become unfavorable, at least out in the eastern Atlantic, for it to develop. Like I said, the track of this system is towards the Caribbean islands, and the later it goes and if that energy can keep itself together, we'll have a better chance of developing as it approaches the eastern Caribbean into the Caribbean, as you can see on the model intensity guidance. So let's look at the models and see how that's going to play out. This is the GFS 850 millibar cyclonic vorticity, spin and energy in the atmosphere 5,000 feet up from the surface of the ocean. Purple hexagon is 94L, pink is Leslie, and red is what's left of Milton, being stretched out by a ton of wind shear, as you can see here. So here is the dry air across much of the Atlantic, a lot of wind shears keeping our systems from really strengthening and maintaining any consistent convection at the moment. But we do have pockets, as you can see, coming off the African coast and also near Central America, which is going to be our Western Caribbean uh, focal point as we see that gain in intensity during the next seven days. So here's 12 hours from now, overnight tonight, into early the morning hours of Saturday. We see this would be the best chance for 94L to become Tropical Storm Nadine uh, if it was to become a tropical system. Because 48 hours from now on Sunday the 13th, it's still a broad area of circulation. So that next 12 hour, maybe 24 hour window is where we're gonna see it if it can take that elongated low pressure and close it off into a closed circular low, it'll become Nadine. If not, it's going to have to wait until it gets later into next week. Still have a lot of wind shear out here, and that's going to cause a lot of that convection to uh, evaporate away, and it's going to get embedded in that Saharan air layer as it traverses westward across the main development region. Now, if you look at the Western Caribbean again, you see we have a low pressure system starting to get together uh, just off the uh, Columbia coastline in the Southern Caribbean at a thousand millibar, uh, thousand eleven millibar low pressure system. That is going to be the focal point to try and consolidate all of this moisture building near the Central American gyro. And we could even get two storms, one in the Caribbean and one in the Pacific basin. So here we are five days from now. The Pacific Basin looks to have one form into at least a tropical storm, maybe a hurricane. And then our South, the Southern Caribbean system just east of Nicaragua will try to start pulling together this vorticity and developing into uh, our next tropical system if 94L doesn't develop. Speaking of 94L, it's in the middle of the main development region, south of our strengthening Bermuda Azores High. And then in blue, we have another tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa with a good chunk of vorticity, and it too could develop. Why? Well, both our black hexagon, which is our Western Caribbean disturbance, and our blue tropical wave are going to have upper level ridges forming overhead that evaporate, that allows the air to expand in the upper levels, can, tr can come together at the low levels, creating that circulation for tropical development. Also creates low wind shear environments, protecting them from that subtropical jet just to their north. And with their moisture content, will continue to deepen and strengthen potentially based on at least this model run and what I've seen the last couple of days as we've been watching these systems. So here we are, seven days from now, next Friday, October 18th, and this rapidly intensifies because of that upper level ridge, deep moisture, low wind shear environment, and very warm waters of the Caribbean, we see a very strong 
a potential hurricane knocking on the door of Nicaragua and Honduras. Will this come to fruition? I don't want to say just yet, but it's something that we are monitoring. It's been on the models for at least the last three days that I've been making these videos since Milton. And you can see it's the time frames are getting closer and closer, which is why I think the National Hurricane Center needs to pick up on this. The purple hexagon is 94L. You can see that vorticity starting to come back to life as it gets into the Caribbean. And the blue hexagon is also showing increased vorticity. Now, here's the European model, just to do a comparison. And you can see 94L tries to keep itself together throughout its journey across the main development region, going around the Bermuda Azores High, missing the Caribbean on this model run. And we can see the vorticity with our Western Caribbean system, not really consolidating, just stays as a nice chunk of um, Central American gyra and vorticity, moving its way into the Gulf of Honduras and the Bay of Campeche by the time we get to next week. So we'll keep an eye on it because uh, it's not quite forming here, So which is why the National Hurricane Center is not picking up on it yet. GFS says big time. European model is saying not needs to more time to fester. So, but it does show up on the ensemble models, as you can see here. Half the amount of low pressure signals you see on the right, on the European model on the left, versus the GFS ensemble model on the right. But it's not like it's not there completely. And then, of course, 94L is much more supported on the European model of developing as it approaches the Caribbean versus the GFS saying, no, nope, its best chances by the Cabo Verde Islands and then will fizzle out as it goes further west. Uh, but it is bullish of that blue tropical wave after it. So we'll keep an eye on all three of these. Leslie is on its way out. Uh, and going extra tropical at least by the day time tomorrow if not tonight 94L has a good chance in the next 12 hours of becoming the Dean if not as it approaches the Caribbean islands and then we will watch the Western Caribbean to see if we have our next big threat as the GFS model has been hinting at the last couple of days next name on the list is Nadine and then after will be on our final column, Oscar, Patty, and Raphael. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather, so if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.